This red-haired loser, Doma, loses his entire family, who gets taken down and ripped apart by a monster. The monster doesn't just let Doma go through a revenge arc, he slices his head off clean as well. But the end of Doma's story is just the beginning because the boy has a hidden ability that allows him to regenerate his body infinitely. He is basically low-budget Deadpool. The monster drags his lifeless body away from his severed head, thinking that the boy is dead, and begins eating it just around the corner with his two monster friends. The two other ugly monsters do not join their leader on the feast though as they consider themselves to be too full to eat any more humans, revealing that they have already devoured the entire village there. They continue to watch the monster leader eat Doma's body when suddenly Doma reappears again out of nowhere and attacks him from behind. The monster, who is in a whole league of his own, entirely completely overpowered the boy and took his life again. As he questions how the boy is still alive, the boy reveals that he can regenerate his lost limbs in mere seconds, which explains that the boy must have regenerated his body the first time using his severed head. However, the monsters do not get scared by the Doma's mysterious power and instead consider it to be a usual gold mine because they have found themselves an infinite food generator. The purple hunchback monster decides to take Doma, all for himself, and names him the Lizard's Tail because he can regrow his tail and his other limbs. After years of countless tortures, the red-haired boy forgets his own name and accepts to be called the Lizard's Tail. He reveals being locked inside the hideout of the monster trio, drenched in his own blood. The hunchback demon, who is hungry, rips off Lizard's leg and shares it with the other demon in the cave. Lizard, who has already regenerated his leg wholly even before the demons could eat it, states that his regenerative powers have become much better over time. But that shouldn't take away from the fact that it hurts the same every time the demons snatch off his limbs. The monster leader who was the first to attack Lizards tells the hunchback to stop playing around with their infinite food, telling him that if they accidentally mess with Lizard's tail, there is a chance of him passing away, revealing that his red hair is his only weakness. Of course, no one wants that to happen, so they don't bother their food much for now. Lizards apparently frees himself of his shackles quite regularly whenever he gets mad at the monster. So this time he frees himself again to fight for his freedom. But the hunchback, who has already faced such scenarios during the past several years, knows that Lizard's a complete weakling who can never win against them. So he doesn't give him any importance and continues to eat his limbs up while in the fight. Being too overconfident in his abilities, the hunchback lets go of his guard for a moment, which lets Lizard land an attack on him. That doesn't end well for him, as the hunchback gets mad and threatens to take his life then and there. However, their leader doesn't let the hunchback do so because they need him, and so he offers the hunchback to take him to another human village if he spares Lizard this time. But being obligated to not take Lizard's life doesn't mean that the hunchback cannot torture him. So he continues to taunt him while ripping off every part of his body. The next day, a human down the road to the monster's cave finds a track of human blood on the road, which makes them realize that there are monsters nearby. It is revealed that the leader is dragging Lizard's bodies towards the human village. He promised to take the hunchback, not wanting anyone else to meet the same fate as him. Lizard screams at the top of his lungs, saying that the monsters are approaching their village. The hunchback doesn't do anything about the persistently annoying lizard as he knows none of the villagers will run away because it's human nature to not trust anything that they hear without having concrete proof of what's being said. At that moment, the human who found the trail of blood finds the monsters and encounters them, telling lizard that he did a good job screaming so loudly as that was what helped him locate them. The mysterious human named Qian Wu claims to be confident in his abilities and promises lizard that he will free him from his miseries. He brings out a specialized ding-dong device, which, upon shaking, plays a certain tune that summons a spirit who lends in her powers to fight monsters. Chi and Wu, revealing to be a monster hunter, brings out his sword, and with ease, slices down the hunchback and the other monster in equal halves, taking them down instantly. He then follows up by attacking the leader of the monsters, who barely dodges it by dashing away, but he too gets eliminated in the blink of an eye, ending the fight in under five seconds. With the monsters gone for good, Chien frees Lizard from his shackles, who becomes so overjoyed with a blast of emotions that he begins to laugh maniacally while shedding tears. Chien gets confused, so Lizard quickly clarifies his intentions and explains that he too wishes to be as strong as him, so that he too can one day defeat the monsters like him. Chien gladly decides to take Lizard as a trainee in the Monster Hunters organization, but first he decides that they should head back to his group, who are at the nearby village. 
However, Lizard doesn't want to be a soldier in Chien's organization who would spend time doing commissions and stuff. Rather, he only wishes to hunt down all monsters, revealing that he can regenerate his body infinitely, which helps Chien understand why this red-haired boy didn't have any scars or wound marks on his body. Recognizing that the red-haired boy is very special, Chien asks for his name, which is done as a sign of respect. The boy, who had been named Lizard's Tail by the monsters, revealed to have completely forgotten what his real name was, but he accepts that name and engraves it inside of his heart as he wants to punish all the monsters for giving him such a horrendous name. Upon learning that bros call the lizard, Sheen realizes that he must have gone through excruciating pain, and so he easily allows lizard to become a monster hunter, knowing that he will be able to endure any harsh training. Lizard claims to be eager to go through any amount of pain to become strong as the end results will satisfy him when he is able to take the lives of all monsters. With him agreeing to all conditions, Sheehan first tells him the basics about the monsters in this world. Apparently a monster doesn't die unless its ring over its head disappears, and because the ring over the monster leader hasn't disappeared, Sheehan uses this opportunity and takes him captive to use him to give Lizard basic monster hunter training. After securing the monster in shackles, Sheehan begins Lizard's awakening process, telling him that all human beings can become strong if they are able to access divine powers that are connected to them spiritually. The first step of awakening, according to Qian, is to open up the sixth sense of the user. But because it would take decades to do so in the normal way, Qian uses brute force on Lizard and activates his sixth sense for him using his divine powers. With the first step being done without facing any difficulties, Qian tells Lizard that he will have to grow his belief in divinity in order to become more connected with it. He also warns Lizard, stating that a person cannot force the divinity to give him power, but because Lizard can endure any pain, Chien believes that he will be able to forcefully hold on to it even if the divinity refuses to lend him its powers. In that case, Lizard will be granted only half of divinity's true power, but that should be enough for him to eliminate monsters, according to Chien's hypothesis. So without any further ado, Chien instructs Lizard to summon the divinity in front of him by using his newly awakened sixth sense. Following the instructions, Lizard manages to summon an aggressive god, who immediately leaves his body after cursing him, making Chien realize that Lizard has called him a very powerful god. So he encourages the boy to recall god again and tells him strictly not to let divinity leave his body. This time, Lizard forces the divinity to stay and consumes all of its overwhelming powers inside his body. As his body starts to feel like it's about to explode because of the sudden surge in strength, Lizard decides to let out his energy by attacking the monster leader, who was responsible for taking him captive and also destroying his entire family. The monster who can believe his prey has become this strong in no time, wonders what this strange monster hunter did to his body. In any case, they begin to fight against each other, and the monster leader specifically targets Lizard's head, knowing that his head and his hair are his only weaknesses. Although Lizard is now overpowered with strength, he is still a rookie when it comes to fighting. So he takes some blows at first, but soon manages to adjust to the monster's speed and punches him so hard that he is sent flying half a mile away. Being filled with bloodlust, Lizard rushes towards the monster at an extreme speed. Chien acknowledges Lizard's strength, potentially reaching heights way higher than Chien's. He also thinks that Lizard is only able to gain so much strength from divinity in so little time because he has devoted himself to divinity way more than any other monster hunter would. Lizard gets a sense of excitement while toying with the monster who has terrorized his life over the past several years. So now that he is finally getting his revenge, he decides to make things more fun and snaps off his own arm, turning it into his weapon. Using this weapon, Lizard strikes back at the monster and slowly overcomes the trauma, which allows him to remember his real name, Doma. But Doma continues using the name Lizard's tail as he doesn't want to forget his gruesome past, so we will continue calling him Lizard. He grabs the monster and successfully cuts down his right arm. Right after, he jumps upwards to deliver a crashing bow, but the monster backs away just in time, which results in Lizard's clash landing on the ground instead, as the impact of Lizard's clash causes the surroundings to turn into a smoke screen. The monster uses the opportunity to strike Lizard from behind when he is not paying attention. However, Lizard senses the attack coming from far away and breaks his weapon into pieces just by glaring at it. The monster starts to realize that Lizard is the actual monster here and senses his imminent death, which diminishes his fighting spirit completely. But as he tries to run away for his life, Lizard comes from behind, 
and decapitates his head, fulfilling his long-awaited revenge. But his journey is just the beginning, as he still wants to take vengeance for his parents' deaths by exterminating all the monsters in this world. Now that the first battle of Lizard as a monster hunter is over, Chien suggests that they head to the nearby village to take a momentary rest. On their way there, Lizard talks with Chien about him being able to possess the Divine Sprit one ago and asks questions like what would have happened to him if he took longer than he did to possess it. Although the question is tough to answer, Chien thinks for a while about it and tells Lizard that if he had taken a longer time to gain control, his hatred would have consumed him completely, turning him into a mindless monster. But that didn't happen, so they moved on to the outskirts of the village when they heard the screams of the villagers coming from afar making both of them realize instantly that the monsters had invaded the village. As the scene shifts, it is shown that a group of monsters is plating the village, taking their chances because they have learned that there are no monster hunters stationed there. As one of the monsters preying on a helpless kid, Lizard comes to his rescue and instantly eliminates the monsters. The other three monsters, watching the events unfold from above, get agitated as they are not informed about any monster hunters being nearby. Knowing that they cannot stand against the monster hunters, one of the demons runs away as he doesn't want to die. But Chien doesn't let him escape and cuts him in half, ending his life with a single blow, and then follows up by taking out two more monsters in an instant. He doesn't stop there and continues wiping out all of the monsters. Knowing that death is at their front door, the monster decides to eat at least one human before leaving this world. But Lizard doesn't let that happen and kicks him away like a football. The villagers who were witnessing the two monster hunters proficiently dealing with all the demons cheered for them. But Lizard doesn't become happy as he notices that someone has lost their close ones. Chien tells Lizard to not get depressed for not being able to be there before, and instead be happy thinking about how many lives he has saved. The village chief approaches the two monster hunters, thanking them both for saving all of the villagers. He offers to do anything for the two heroes who saved them, so Chien asks him to get Lizard some clothes and food to eat. Accordingly, the village chief takes Lizard away, promising him the best treatment he has ever received in his life. In the meantime, Chien confronts the three monster hunters who were assigned to guard this village. They make excuses, saying that they went out sightseeing because there weren't any monsters nearby, which Chien finds to be disgusting as their carelessness has resulted in many innocent deaths. Chien, who reveals himself to be these three hunters' superior, tells them to start making up for their mistakes by taking responsibility for the casualties and begs for forgiveness from the victim's family. Later at night, Lizard is seen to be in a new clean look, with his long hair gone and wearing fresh clothes. He approaches Chien, thanking him for letting him become a monster hunter first, and then telling him his goal, which is to exterminate all monsters from this planet. To become even stronger, he gets down on his knees and requests that Chien make him his apprentice. Chien gladly agrees to make him his student as he knows that Lizard has the potential to become the strongest monster hunter, but he warns him, saying that their training is going to be brutal. Before getting started with their training, Chien first gives Lizard a basic lesson about monster hunters and how they usually operate in this world. Basically, the hunter's job is to protect humans from evil and also eliminate monsters. The monster hunters are divided into two main groups based on their objectives. The first is known as the Guardian's Army, which focuses on protecting human territory like towns and villages, and eliminating monsters who invade it. For example, the three monster hunters from earlier who got scolded by Chian were from the Guardian's Army Division. On the other hand, the Advanced Division goes out in the wilderness and into the unknown to hunt down all of the monsters. Chian is among them, and that's why he was outside scouting in the wilderness when the monsters were dragging Lizard towards the nearby village. Without any hesitation, Lizard decides to join the advanced division as his goal is to wipe out the monsters, and gets hyped over the fact that he will train to become stronger than ever. For starters, Chien tells Lizard that they will have to run quite a lot while being possessed by the divine power, which will result in them being able to maintain the spirit inside them longer. Lizard possesses the divine power as instructed, but Chien doesn't, as he is already strong enough in his human form to keep up with Lizard's pace. After running till the next morning, Lizard expresses his discomfort, saying that if he continues running any longer, he might actually die from exhaustion. He begs Chien to take a break for God's sake, so Chien, being a merciful mentor, takes him to a village of monsters and tells him to take a break there while subjugating those monsters. Lizard happily takes the challenge and rushes towards the enemy to take down each and every single one of them, using his left hand bones as his weapon. 
Chien tells Lizard to avoid taking hits from now on, as he notices that Lizard keeps on taking blows while fighting because of his regenerative abilities. Although Lizard doesn't think avoiding attacks is necessary, Chien assures him that if he does so, he will become stronger as a fighter. Trusting in Chien's words, Lizard starts putting efforts into the fight and dodges the attacks before destroying the monsters. As more monsters continue coming his way, he goes into berserk mode and deals with every single one of them at a rapid pace. Eventually, the never-ending fight is over once Lizard deals with all of them, so Chien allows him to take a well-deserved rest for a few minutes, and then tells him that they will have to continue running again on their way to the next village. Hoping to have a good meal, Lizard begins running at a fast pace again and continues traveling with Chien from one village to another. They follow the regime of traveling here and there and taking out monster camps for the next several weeks until they reach a much more townish place where Chien shows him a floating ship coming on their way. Apparently, this floating ship takes passengers to the central city, so both Chien and Lizard decide to travel using it. As they arrive in Central City just after boarding the ship for a couple of minutes, Lizard asks Chien about their purpose for coming here. Chien explains that he wants to go to the Monster Hunter's headquarters, which is a giant white willow tree, to introduce Lizard to everyone since he is a new Monster Hunter. Chien vouches for Lizard to the receptionist, so the receptionist allows Lizard to join the advanced division without taking any tests, which are the prerequisites. The receptionist asks Lizard if he has gotten an outfit yet, but after getting a negative answer, he decides to give him one just because Chien is the one who recommended him. Speaking of Chien, he meets with his superior, Yi Sun, who is the battalion commander of the hunter's organization. Yi Sun pats on Chien's shoulders as his senior. However, his gestures offend Lizard, who doesn't take it lightly that someone else is putting their hands on his precious teacher's souls. He is clearly out of line, so Chien punishes him explaining to Yi Sun that the redhead lizard is his new apprentice who hasn't mentally matured yet. Speaking of apprentices, Yi Sun's two apprentices, Zhang and Ran, get furious at Lizard for speaking so rudely with their master. They end up picking a fight with Lizard, who claims to be much stronger than they are, even though he is just a rookie on his first day as an official monster hunter. Not being able to take the humiliation, Ran decides to sort their differences out in a mock duel. But Yi Sun comes up with an even better idea and tells Chien to have their students compete against each other instead of fighting. For the commission, he tells the receptionist to find them a cleanup operation, explaining that he will send all of the disciples to the destination on a mission to hunt monsters. He then assigns Chien as the boy's platoon leader and sets out, telling him to have fun on his journey. Chien leads the three noisy boys on a special vehicle called the Palanquin which is a super fast vehicle just like the floating ship that Lizard took earlier to come to the central city. Lizard shows his excitement over the fact that he will get to subjugate more monsters, but his exhaustion causes his excitement to fade away as he unintentionally falls asleep on the palanquin. Round doesn't let him enjoy a sound sleep though, and he mocks Lizard for resting instead of preparing for their mission. They arrive at the said destination, and so their platoon leader Chien commands them to march towards the enemy's base, telling them to bring nothing back except for the enemy's heads. Lizard goes into beast mode immediately, activating his divine powers, and rushes towards the enemies, leaving both Ran and Zhang behind, making them question if this guy actually intends to solo murder all of the monsters. Zhang awakens the divinity of fire in him, which sets him ablaze and allows him to go forward at a much faster pace than Lizard, making the boy realize that he shouldn't have underestimated them. John uses a move called Fiery Fist while flying towards the monster's nest and burns all of them down along with their villages in an instant. Rayon, who also wants to take part in the fun, activates the Divinity of Thunder and causes the entire place to erupt in lightning, electrocuting all of the remaining monsters who manage to escape the fire. Lizard remains unbothered by his new two rivals' strength and continues on his way to fight the monsters, ripping his right arm again in order to use it as a weapon. Seeing him do that, both Rayon and Zhang realize that Qian's new apprentice is absolutely mental, let alone the fact that he has infinite regenerative powers. Speaking of the lunatic, he continues smashing the monsters even after their deaths just for his enjoyment, which completely freaks out Rayon. Zhang asks Lizard how he turned into this berserk-type monster hunter, and if Qian put him through gruesome training, which led him to lose his sanity. In response to Zhang's question, Lizard states that they have been running for this past month continuously, and that has been the only training they have done so far. 
Their conversation gets interrupted as a monster with lightning speed pierces his hand through Lizard's heart in order to punish him, revealing himself to be the leader of this land that these three monster hunters have defiled. While Lizard cowers in pain because he has his heart missing, the other two contemplate what they should do now, knowing that their enemy is not going to be easy to defeat since they too weren't able to see him coming to attack Lizard. Lizard heals up completely and proudly claims to have murdered all the monsters here, rubbing salt into the wound of the monster leader. As the monster knocks Lizard away, Joan utilizes the time bought by Lizard, the Divinity of Fire, on the monster. The fire doesn't deal a single hit to the monster, who seems pretty invincible. But Lizard keeps coming at him, knowing that he won't defeat him this time. But he is sure that if he tries a hundred or a thousand times, he will be able to defeat this unbeatable looking monster boss. The two disciples of Yi Sun attack the monster boss together. Lizard uses the opportunity to sneak from behind and lands the first hit on him successfully. The monster boss diverts his focus on Lizard, forgetting that he has to keep the other two monster hunters in check as well. John uses this opportunity to punch the monster boss's arm and tells the others to continue launching blows at the monster. Rayon electrocutes the monster boss from the left side using his divinity of thunder and sends him flying away but the monster still remains unscathed and being overwhelmed with adrenaline running through his entire body, he awakens the ring over his head, which lets his weapon become even stronger. With the axe now imbued with the power of the mysterious monster ring, the boss monster waves the axe in the air, which itself creates a deadly attack that almost cuts through all of the monster hunters who barely dodge it. John realizes that if they do not increase their power, they won't be able to stand against this awakened monster, so they activate their division power again and this time to level 3, indicating that there are certain levels and ranks when activating this power. According to Qian, the level of progression ranges from level 1 to level 10. If a hunter is only at the first level, it means that they are able to only see the picture of divinity. But if a person is at level 10, they become able to completely impersonate divinity. According to Qian, Lizard's divinity is not even near level 1, even though he has strength great enough to defeat monsters with ease. But not all monsters are weak, and there will be times when Lizard will have to face stronger opponents who won't take any damage unless there is a certain amount of divinity in their opponent. Because Lizard's divinity is so low, that is the reason why he hasn't been able to land a single effective hit on him. He becomes afraid, thinking that the monster will take his life by smashing his head into bits if he keeps on charging at him without having any strategies in mind. Therefore, he clears up his mind, while in the meantime, the monster injures Round by grazing him with his axe. John, who hasn't been much of a help because the monster seems to be immune to power, wonders what he should do since, being a mage, he isn't physically strong enough to go on head-to-head -head combat. So Rayon decides to buy Jong some time to use another one of his spells, who skillfully targets only the eyes of the monster, blinding it temporarily using fire magic. Taking advantage of the situation, Rayon summons a lightning strike on the monster, which pierces through his body. The monster becomes enraged, stating that he no longer wants to play with his food anymore, and charges at them to take them down. However, Ryan doesn't think that humans are food for these monsters because they are the ones who keep running away from humans, known as the monster hunters. The monster doesn't accept the insult and decides to fight back with actions instead of words like Ryan and Zhang. In the meantime, Lizard begins to channel dark energy inside his body, because Qian told him to do so, so that he can beat an awakened monster. As the divinity's power is too vast for any human to store fully, one cannot contain too much of it. Because of the limitations inside the human body, the flow of divine powers is naturally reduced. But with Qian's guidance, Lizard learns to break through the limit and attain more of divinity's power within his body. With this technique that he learned from Qian, Lizard possesses the divinity, who, although expressing his displeasure at being summoned against his will, still lets Lizard have some of his powers through the ground and into his body. As Lizard begins to absorb the immense power coming from the divinity, he goes through hellish pain that burns all of the cells in his body. But thanks to his regenerative abilities, he eventually controls the power of the divinity. The monster, on the other hand, who didn't pay much attention to Lizard as he considered him to be just a weakling, finally notices that his arms have grown back, which means the boy has a regenerative body. Wanting to have him all for himself, the monster rushes towards Lizard, who rushes back towards him. As the two engage in a head-to-head -head clash, both John and Ran join Lizard in order to take down the enemy. Qian, who thinks that it's just about time that Lizard uses his actual powers, decides to go closer to have a better view of the battle. 
Blizzard fights par on par with the monster boss and continues repeating the same strategy of distracting and landing attacks from different sides. Blizzard finally lands a good hit on the monster boss and punches him hard, causing him to crash against the pillars. Blizzard is known to have the most stamina out of the three apprentices, but he gets tired because he uses too many powers from the divinity. Realizing that their time is running out, John proposes that they confront the monster together and nicks up a plan, giving Ran the job of stopping the monster's movement while he himself will take on the boss head to head. But Lizard stops John, telling him to take a break, and takes the attacking part for himself as he is confident that he alone will be able to take down the monster boss. Both Lizard and Ran walk in the direction of the monster. Ran tells Lizard to stop acting like he is the strongest here. But Lizard shuts his mouth, telling him that he doesn't want to hear anything coming out of a weakling's mouth. The monster, on the other hand, barely stands up, acknowledging how overpowered Lizard is because of his regenerative body. He also acknowledges how strong the other two monster hunters are, yet he remains determined to defeat them, as losing to them would mean his death. He makes a pact with his ring to guarantee his win and sacrifices half of his expected lifetime to become twice as strong as he was before. Absorbing the devil's ring into his body, the monster dashes towards Round with swift speed, who barely dodges the attack. Lizard comes in behind with a kick, but unlike last time, the monster grabs him mid-air anticipating that surprise attack and yeets him away into the sky. But just as Lizard is about to crash into the ground, the monster lunges towards him and begins to punch him rapidly in order to render him unconscious. Thankfully, Ran reaches there as fast as lightning and hits the monster with the thunder's breath, forcing him to move away. Lizard jumps above in the sky when the monster isn't paying attention to him and delivers a diving plunge attack on him. Following up with many rapid punches in the face, to make him stop, the monster grabs Lizard by his face, assuming that Lizard will faint if he is unable to breathe. However, the monster hunter remains persistent, and with the help of Ran, Lizard gets free from the monster's hold. Ran traps the monster using thunder spears, and while he holds him firmly against the ground, Joan appears there being engulfed in flames and burns the monster into crisp, ending the battle with Lizard being left completely disappointed because Joan stole his rightfully deserved moment. John, who appears to be still engulfed by the divine fire, struggles to get back to his original form, which makes Ran realize that the divinity is trying to devour his body. As John loses control over his body, Ran takes desperate measures, telling Lizard that they will have to pull out John's right arm, golden bracelet, to force him to disconnect with the divinity. Fortunately, their platoon leader Chien arrives there just in time and does it for Ran by absorbing the divine powers coming out of his body. Jung thanks Qian for saving his life, who tells him not to worry about it and congratulates everyone for successfully completing their mission. Now that Yi Sun's subordinates acknowledge that Lizard 2 is a strong monster hunter, the competition comes to an end. Qian takes his leave from them as he wishes to traverse the northern side of the world and takes Lizard with him. Both Jung and Ran give their sensei a much-deserved salute and promise him that the next time they meet, they will be stronger than Lizard. They head back to the central city when Ran scolds John for not being able to control his divinity, as he almost let the all brawn no brain lizard become the main character. But John, who claims to already have acknowledged Lizard as the main character, tells Ran to stop with his lame rivalry. They move to the next important topic, which is increasing their territory, and in order to be able to do so, they will have to subjugate many monsters. On the other hand, Chien and Lizard stay the night at a fairway guard post. But instead of taking rest, Lizard begins to stroll around as if he is anxious about something, so Chien asks him if something is wrong with this place. Lizard explains that that is not the case, rather he is concerned about his weapon. Until now he has been using his right arm as his main weapon, but because he has become too strong, his arm bones aren't able to keep up with his strength and burst into bits every time he tries to use it. So Chien suggests that he use an actual weapon and offers to lend him his own weapon to give it a try. However, Lizard doesn't want any other weapon as he only wants to use his arm, which causes him to sulk as he knows he won't be able to do so. Chien goes to sleep, but Lizard's eyes remain wide open as he continuously thinks about how to use his arm as a weapon. Suddenly, it hits him, figuring out that if he channels his strength into his bones only, then they may be able to withstand his force. Although Chien told him to sleep and take a rest first, Lizard goes out to test out his theory and summons the divinity to use its power on his left arm bones. But instead of becoming sturdy, the arm mutates, forcing him to cut it off himself. 
so he tries following another method and continues testing it until morning. When Shane wakes up, finding Lizard to be outside in the field sleeping soundly and being surrounded by hundreds of his severed arm, he doesn't even get surprised at this point since it's normal that the lunatic will do something like this. A mysterious blue bird approaches Lizard, who is still asleep, and pinches him on the cheeks in order to wake him up. But as Lizard remains unbothered by its pecking, the bird gets offended and rapidly pecks him on the mouth. As a result, Lizard wakes up without being hurt at all, which again hurts the blue bird as it had considered itself to be somewhat strong. So it runs away in tears from Lizard after delivering him a package. Chien sees how confused the muscle head looks, so he explains that there are new uniforms inside the package because the old ones were torn to pieces during Lizard's previous fight. Lizard thanks Chien for doing him such a favor, and when he is about to open the package, he sees a note attached to it that says that Lizard's monthly salary will be deducted as a payment for his uniform. Lizard obviously had no idea that he was getting paid, but he doesn't question it as he isn't interested in money at all, so he focuses on the package and finds a marble inside a box. This marble is used to require assistance from the rescue and support team in an emergency. It is also used to trace where a hunter is, so if Lizard has one, Chien will be able to trace him down. After explaining to him how to use the request marble, Chien inquires about his weapon, asking him if he has managed to acquire one without breaking his arm. Lizard claims that he has successfully done it but doesn't show it to him just yet, as he wants to introduce it only when they get into a fight with a monster. Since the place where they stayed is a guard post that all of the hunters use, Lizard cleans up his mess on the field when three monster hunters come there, alarmed by the blood all over the place. They assume that some monsters must have attacked people here. But what they don't know is that the lunatic with a broom here is the one who caused all of this mess. The two young hunters get into an argument because that is what teenagers do nowadays instead of flirting. So their leader, the only adult in the team, breaks up the fight, telling both of them to calm down. The leader then meets with Chien, who recognizes him as Taesu, an old friend. Chien introduces Lizard to Tasu, who then introduces his own subordinates, Sayol and Himo. Taesu reveals to have a regenerative body just like Lizard does, which upsets the poor boy as he no longer feels special. Taizu asks Xian how life is nowadays and thanks him for doing the Guardian Division's work by protecting the villagers all around their country. Even though he is from the Advanced Division, whose job it is to venture into the outside world. Xian states that he only does others' work because the hunters in the small villages do not care about the poor villagers. Taizu claims to be undergoing a touch mission that involves disappearance cases. Apparently, the monsters have been kidnapping people and that's why Taesu is investigating this matter to get to the roots of the group of monsters who are the perpetrators. He shares the time when he saw the kidnapping take place in a nearby village at night. A young drunk man was just strolling around aimlessly when suddenly a monster with tentacles captured him and took him away before Tazu could do anything about it. That monster had a total of four tentacles, who used all of them to capture his prey and feed on them all night long. Hoping to find the monster's territory, Taesu followed him when he learned that they were from the north, which is supposed to be a restricted area. This piques Chien's interest, as he cannot seem to believe that any monsters will be able to come from there by breaking the boundaries set by their ancestors. Taizu explains that the monsters had actually made an underground tunnel, which they used to traverse at night and kidnap people from the villages. Because these kidnappings are happening in many villages simultaneously, Taizu tells Chien that they should become a team in order to prevent them. Chien agrees to join Tasu on this mission which makes Tasu very happy as it was his original goal to make Chien join his team. Later in the evening, Taesu finds Chien under a tree, meditating and possibly talking to his divinity regarding some undisclosed matter. So he chooses not to disturb him and goes to Lizard instead, asking him what his skills and abilities are so that he can assign him a role in his team. Lizard, who is still sulking over the fact that he is not special, tells Taesu that he doesn't have any skills. Moreover, he can only summon the divinity by forcing it, making his impersonation incomplete. Taizu suggests that Lizard talk with his divinity to sort out their differences, but Lizard doesn't want to do that, revealing to Taizu that his divinity is a noisy guy who constantly throws curses and slurs everywhere. So Taizu changes the topic and asks Lizard why he keeps talking like a total delinquent with no manners, even though he is talking with a senior who is a good friend of his master. Lizard doesn't want to bring up his past of being locked by monsters for several years, so he chooses to remain silent about it. With the sun setting down, Taesu gathers everyone in front of him and heads out to commence their mission. 
He leads them to the edge of a mountain cliff to look at the nearby area from above while not being seen by anyone. Apparently, the underground path that leads to the city is just around the corner, and as they come out one after another carrying humans inside cages, Lizard gets up, as he doesn't want anyone to suffer the pain he did. Tezu stops him from making a move, telling him that sacrifice is necessary for the greater good and explaining that if they save all of the people here, they won't be able to find out the roots of the kidnapper group's hideout, which will end up resulting in hundreds of more people dying. Making it clear that he is the leader here, Tezu tells Lizard strictly to follow his instructions. The kidnappers, on the other hand, fight over who will get to eat their prey tonight. Not wanting things to escalate any further, they choose peace, deciding to talk things out when they reach their hideout. As they begin moving towards their hideout, Tezu tells everyone to follow them while he stays behind, channeling his powers and summons something to take care of the remaining monsters who were left behind. Right after, he catches up to them and finds out that there are hundreds of locked humans inside cages at the monster's hideout. Chin deduces that the sage with the long beard must be the guy in charge of the kidnapping group, who looks like a real tough nut. Now that they are at the hideout, Taesu makes some changes in plans and instructs Chien to take out the leader of the kidnappers immediately. He immediately jumps in and delivers many deadly blows on the bearded sage, immobilizing him and then follows up by ripping the tentacle monster and the other formidable looking monsters into pieces. The other monsters who underestimate Chien because he is just a single guy charge at him. In the meantime, Taesu's subordinate Sayol, who has the divinity of water, controls his blood and restrains the monsters who are not engaging in the fight against Chien. After capturing all of them by sacrificing a lot of his blood, Sayol calls Himo to assist him. Himo, who has the god Pain as her divinity, is according to Greek mythology, a god capable of bringing disease and therefore propitiated as a god of healing. Channeling the god's powers, Himo uses divine healing to take down her opponents, who get decapitated but do not bleed because of the healing process. On the other hand, Tesu is connected with a god named Duxini, who is a ferocious spirit that likes to crush people's skulls. He keeps monitoring the actions of Chiel and his subordinates while being stationed above the cliff. Lizard desperately wishes to take part in the fight, but Tezu doesn't let him and tells him to keep a low profile for the moment. He perhaps uses voodoo on the monsters and telepathically crushes their skulls using the powers of Duxini, which leaves Lizard impressed as he has never seen someone with such terrifying powers who also has the cheat skill of regeneration. After dealing with all of the monsters without facing a single casualty, Tesu rescues the kidnapped humans from their cages, who all bow down to him in unison to thank him for saving them. On the other hand, Sayol, who has captured the main four bosses of the kidnapping group, doesn't murder them just yet, as Tezu wants to interrogate them. Lizard, who doesn't understand why they have to keep the monsters alive, begs the others to let him at least eliminate one of them. Himo cuts the sage's arm off on Tasu's command, revealing herself to be the renowned hunter who leaves scars on the bodies of her enemies. As she begins to torture them, Tessa questions them more about their base of operations, threatening to hurt them more if they do not cooperate. As he slices off the head of one monster, the sage tells him that if their kidnapping is stopped, then the monsters who are taking the supplies will get furious, and that will end up making things worse for the human side. But Tezu doesn't care and orders Himo to chop off all of the limbs of the sage in order to make him talk. However, the sage remains persistent and tells them that they are nothing compared to the monsters of the north. Realizing that the sage won't comply, Tesu moves on to the next guy who promises to not know anything and gets eliminated for lying. The last monster, who is a bit wiser than them, decides to cooperate, telling him that they are kidnapping all of the humans for Beelzebub, the prince of all demons. According to the monster, there is a road ahead leading to the northern boundary underground. The entrance to the road can only be opened with the devil's ring, meaning no one else except the monsters will be able to open the gates but the monster offers to open it for them if Tezu lets him walk away afterwards. Tezu agrees to the deal, even after learning that he and his team will most probably not be able to come out of the road alive because of how dangerous it is. Sage, who cannot believe that his subordinate would just reveal their secrets like that, curses him and tells him to rot in the gutter. His comments annoy the monster, so he quickly eliminates the sage and proceeds to the supposed entrance, which he opens up using his devil's ring. The entire mountain divides into two, opening a small road to the entrance of the surrounding road. As promised, Tesu lets the monster leave, but not in the way you think. He lets the monster leave this world by taking his life, 
the support team arrives there to join Tasu on their mission. Teizu tells them their objective, which is to not enter the underground road but to completely block this path so that the monsters never get the chance to come from the north. But they need many people in order to block the road completely. So while one of the hunters goes away to get more support, Teisu decides to enter the road in the meantime to deal with any monsters that are left in there. For this battle, Teisu lets Lizard join in, so he mutates his left arm, disgusting everyone, and cuts it down, turning it into his weapon. Seeing the disgusting incident unfold, Hemo pukes. All of the monster hunters there also realize that Chien's new subordinate is a total lunatic. But Chien himself doesn't care and rather seems proud of Lizard for being able to transform his arm into a working weapon. On the other side, the northern ruler of the monsters, Nava Nim, learns the news that the cliff door has opened for some reason. Realizing that it must be the monsters who have found the entrance, he tells his subordinate to get rid of the monster hunters before his boss Ball finds out about it. Meanwhile, the monster hunters step inside the dungeon road, where they come across a huge hallway, which is pretty normal because this road is used by countless monsters at once. The support team of three, Wood, Bell, and Jin One, introduces themselves to Lizard, calling themselves the Chosen Ones. According to Qian, the Chosen Ones can borrow the divine power not from one god, but from all gods without possessing any spirits, which allows them to use those powers more freely than normal monster hunters. Lizard calls it unfair and cheating that these guys get to use divine powers without suffering from any pain. He is one to talk, he has forgotten that he literally has the greatest cheating skill on the planet, making him potentially immortal and invincible. Teizu stops the talk and directs the team to march ahead down the road, hoping to eventually come across some monsters. After running for a while, Teizu's team isn't able to find any monsters, which causes him to wonder if this road really leads to the northern territory of the monsters. Seal suddenly hears something coming from the left, when suddenly the walls along the road break, revealing hundreds of monsters who ambush Tasu's team from all directions. Chien, being a skilled swordsman, cuts through all of them with a single slash of his sword. But the monsters keep on coming their way, revealing that they are not just some ordinary pests, but awakened monsters who can utilize the powers of the Devil's Ring to the fullest. Realizing that all of the monster hunters will lose their stamina fighting against an army of monsters eventually, Chien takes a moment to teach Lizard about the awakened monsters, which infuriates Tasu as the current matter is more concerning than his muscle head student's growth. He advises everyone to hold it together, as they cannot afford to lose all of their energy here. But the muscle head doesn't pay attention to his words and rushes towards the army of monsters, announcing that he alone will eliminate them all. With Lizard taking the lead, the other hunters follow and march ahead to fight against the monsters. Using his new weapon, Lizard holds on to his own against the monsters, which puts Chien at ease as he can now focus fully on subjugating the monsters rather than keeping an eye on his student to ensure he is safe. A monster hiding behind the walls attacks Lizard, thinking that he has taken him down, but Lizard proves him wrong, revealing himself to be invincible, and cuts him down. However, the monster reveals to also have regeneration abilities, which raises the question of how he is going to defeat him. Lizard, who is totally disgusted by the monster because he looks similar to the monster leader, who had originally taken him captive years ago, asks him if he is a relative of that monster or something. The monster claims to know nothing and makes it clear that he is not into the chit-chat thing that Lizard is trying to do. So Lizard gets into serious mode and slices his head off. On the other hand, Nava Nim, the ruler of the place, learns about the monster hunter, who has a regenerative body and decides to capture him to give him as a gift to his Lord Bao. A monster appears before the hunters, carrying hundreds of human corpses piled up in two bags to intimidate them. After successfully doing so, the monster claims to be a messenger of Nava Nim, telling them that if they do not make a move in time, Nava will take the lives of more humans for the sake of her entertainment. Munching on the corpses, the monster mocks Tasu for not being able to locate their lair yet and tells him in great detail about the sufferings that the humans experience because of their lord Nava Nim. Tezu, unable to take this any longer, uses his telepathic powers to crush the monster's head, putting an end to him. Deciding to take care of things right away, Tezu orders his subordinate to locate the hidden base, who uses his blood art to traverse in all directions down the road. After tracing every spot that looks nearly like the entrance to the hidden lair using the blood art, he manages to dig through a certain space and break through it, discovering the lair of Nava Nim. Nava, who is more than prepared to welcome the monster hunters to her territory, 
gets excited as the monster hunter she wants to capture is walking right into where she wants him to. Meanwhile, Tasu's team follows the bloodstains and enters the lair of Nava Nim, who reveals to have gathered all her monsters in a disciplined formation to welcome the hunters. Lizard, who doesn't understand why these ruthless creatures are acting in order, messes with them, blatantly wanting to pick up a fight, and even eliminates one of them. But still, the others do not react, so he takes this opportunity and begins to murder all of them for fun. Nava, who doesn't like the fact that Tasu's team is a bunch of arrogant punks, reveals thousands of human prisoners who she has captured in order to lower their fighting spirit. As Tazu's expression changes, it makes Nava happy. She doesn't get too satisfied, and so she tells all of her subordinates stationed there to begin eating all of the humans freely. The hunter team rushes to protect the humans, and even though they manage to keep the monsters away for now, Nava knows they won't be able to keep up too long since she has an endless army of monsters. Being sure that everything will be in her grasp eventually, Nava begins to laugh maniacally, claiming that the strongest one out of the hunters will be the first one to die. Tesu, who is not that good at fighting physically, focuses on bursting the monster's heads, but because it takes him some time to channel his energy into his voodoo dolls, he tells Sayul to buy him some time to prepare for his attack. However, Sayul, who is busy dealing with monsters, claims that he cannot even use his blood art properly anymore. So not being able to think of a way to make an escape, he tells Chien to focus on making way for the human prisoners so that they can escape. Chien leads the people towards the escape route, while the others focus on reducing the number of monsters. Nava Nim, who instantly realizes that Chien must be the strongest out of all of them as he was given the task of rescuing the humans, tells her subordinate Hiru to capture Lizard as the others are now distracted. Lizard stands no chance against the experienced monster Hiru loses against him instantly. As Hiru escapes after taking Lizard away from the battlefield, Taisu realizes that Nava Nim's goal from the very beginning was to kidnap Lizard because she wanted to have him for his regenerative body. With the strongest fighter Chien too busy rescuing the human prisoners, Tesu takes it upon himself to rescue Lizard from Hiru. Meanwhile, Lizard continues fighting with Hiru, who keeps belittling him for being a weakling. Tezu quickly makes his way there and tries smashing Hiru's skull right away. However, Hiru manages to dodge it as he has figured out that Tezu targets the enemy's head with an attack that comes without a form. To defeat Tezu, Hiru goes through his second awakening which leaves Tasu's jaw wide open as he didn't expect this monster to be this incredibly strong. Tezu doesn't think he will be able to win against Hiru on his current level, so he requests Lizard buy him some time to raise his power level. Lizard excitedly steps up to fight Hiru, but Hiru completely ignores him and attacks Tezu instead, slicing his left arm off completely. Thankfully, Tezu also has regenerative abilities, so he instantly regenerates his arm again, Hiru, who cannot believe the goldman he has found, begins to laugh as he knows that Nava Nim will be pleased to have two regenerative bodies at her disposal. Lizard pushes his limits to achieve the strength he has never had before, yet he still fails to land any attack on Hiru and continuously takes a heady beating from him. He struggles to survive against the overpowering monster Hiru, but at least remains safe thanks to his instant regeneration. Hiru is left impressed by the boy's regeneration but still doesn't consider it good enough, calling him as frail as a piece of paper. Lizard doesn't take the comment lightly, tells Hiru that he will die for his arrogance, and charges at Hiru at a speed that disappoints him, as he expected something good from the loser. But know that he knows that he is all talk, but no bite. He continues to give him a good beating. Deciding to cut Lizard into small pieces to force his mind to collapse, Hiru divides him in half and, accordingly, cuts him into small pieces, reducing him to a pulp. But in an instant, Lizard regenerates Act to his original form again and grabs Hiru's head from behind, putting all his strength in his fists to strangle the monster. To escape from his hold, Hiru rips off both of the arms of the boy, which leads to nothing as Lizard regenerates both of his arms instantly, grabs Hiru's neck again, and this time, he also bites into his left ear. He doesn't stop there and pinches into the eyes of Hiru, blinding him temporarily. Knowing that at this pace he might lose the fight, Hiru crashes himself along with Lizard on his back against the wall repeatedly several times and successfully manages to make Lizard let him go. But Lizard keeps coming back at him again and distracting him long enough that Tezu manages to make his goddess get into his new possessed form. The goddess curses Hiru with severe headaches, and with just a wave of her hand, she makes him levitate and crush his head, putting an end to this battle. For using complete possession of her, 
the goddess punishes Tasu by crushing his head, but he regenerates it right away, leaving Lizard in disbelief as he cannot comprehend how someone can still live after having their head exploded. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed this recap, kindly like and subscribe to our channel so we can bring you the next episodes of this exciting manhwa. See you next time.